Come on now. We need the strength of God. We need the power of God. I don't know who told you that you can make it all by yourself. But I believe I can get a few people in here to say, if it had not been for the Lord giving me strength, I would have gave up a long time ago. I would have quit. I would have thrown in the towel. Come on now. I would have left home and never came back if the Lord had not granted me strength. That's why I'm going to praise him. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, that's why I'm going to open up my mouth on today and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on and put your hands together as you are grabbing your Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for this awesome opportunity to come before you on this day of graduation, this day of opportunity. Amen. This day of open doors and prosperity. Surely the Lord is in this place on today. I want to thank Bishop Bradley for giving me this opportunity to preach on today. Amen. I want to give God praise for all of our elders, our ministers, our deacons. Amen. Those of you that are here that have a position in the house of God. I want to thank God for the people of God being here today. Amen. You could have decided to stay at home, but you decided to come to the house because somewhere along the journey and along your path, you realize that you need the Lord to go before you into your week, into your work week, amen, into your week of business, into, into your week, amen, of believing God for the fullness of your strength. You needed him to be with you on this week. So you came into the house, you set aside the first day of the week. This is the first day of the week. You set aside the first day of the week. Amen. You said, I'm going to put God first. Because when you commit something to the Lord and you put the Lord first, everything else will begin to fall in place for you. So I also want to congratulate our graduates on today, those that are here. And many of you, uh, you may not realize it today, or you may not have thought about it, but all of you are graduating. All of us are in a season of going up higher. We're in a season of rising up. Amen. You can never get so low into a place of disappointment, into a place of discouragement, into a place of brokenness that the Lord will not come looking for you. And he will lift you up out of the place from where you are. And he will strengthen you and take you into the place that he has designed for you during this season. So on today, this will be a message of elevation. Somebody say elevation. elevation. It is time for elevation in the house of God. And as the Lord began to give me this word, I said, Lord, the way some things, the way things look sometimes, it don't look like a time of elevation. But the Lord said, I'm not going by what you see in the natural. I'm going by what I have already prophesied over the house of God. And the Lord said he only needs two or three, come on now, to be in the house and to be in the place of expectation in order for him to move in our atmosphere. Even in the back, we have some exciting things going on. Amen. As I came through the back door, I saw... The women, I saw the team, the graduation team, amen, the college ministry team that were back there washing pots and putting food in place and getting the place uh, beautiful in order to celebrate our graduates. So the message today, I won't be before you long and I definitely won't be before you long because I left my glasses at home. But how many of you know I thank God for the dollar store? I thank God for armor bearers. Armor bearers, God know who he wants to, who he's raising up to assist you, amen. 
Minister Carolyn Kisa, I got a pair of glasses in my car, prophetess, that you can use. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And then I have one of the mothers of the church. She's going to be helping me to preach this message on today. Amen. None other than Mother Tommy, who, when she opens up her mouth, demons begin to flee. So I thought that I was in a place, you know, where the devil was attacking me because I left my glasses at home. No, God was at work because he wanted to raise a voice up today in the house by the name of Mother Tommy. So we thank the Lord for all of you that are here to witness this elevation on today. Amen. So I would like for you to get your Bibles. Let me see your Bibles over the house. Hold your Bibles up. If you don't bring your Bible to church, amen, uh, you must be dependent upon your, your device, your device, your, your electronic device, whether it would be your iPhone or whether it would be, amen, your iPad, some type of device. You did bring the word with you, amen. And we want you to know that you need to keep the word fresh in your belly during this season. You need the word that is only by the word of God that we can prosper. Amen. It's only by the word of God that we can be elevated and promoted into the kingdom. So we thank God for the word. So while you have your Bibles, I want you to open it to Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. And I'm going to read that one for you in the voice. Reading the scriptures from now on will be none other than our mother, Mother Tommy. And while I'm reading this scripture, I would like for everyone to stand over the house. I know you just finished worshiping God and standing on your feet. But I would like for you to stand and show the enemy this is a prophetic act that you do have the strength of God. You do have the strength of God, no matter what you went through, no matter what the enemy tried to bring you all towards your way over this past week. You have the strength of God, and you can overcome it, and you shall overcome it, and you shall be strengthened on today when you go out of these doors to even go to the next dimension. So we're opening up our word to Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Amen. And it reads, just a moment, praise God. And it reads, I'll be reading from the ESV version. It says, rejoice not over me, over my enemy, when I fall. I shall, what? I should do what? I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. You can take your seat. We're going to be discussing what I want you to leave here knowing today. What I want you to leave here knowing, and I need you to write this down, and I need you to put a date by it. Today is May the 19th. And you're writing your scripture down, Micah 7 and 8. And this is what I want you to write on your paper, paper, as a prophetic word to you right now. In that prophetic word, uh, I'll give it to you, and it, I want to see how many Remanites do we have in the building. If you are a, a Remanite, I want you to release a shout right now. Somebody say, what is an Aramanite? It means that you are part of the remnant. You have come in the covenant with anointed remnant international ministries and because you came in the covenant with anointed remnant international ministries, it also means that you have another wife by the name of anointed remnant global assemblies. We are in covenant together. 
So this is a prophetic word to us. Somebody say awesome. So the prophetic word is the remnant is arising. The remnant is rising up. That's another way of saying it. The remnant is arising. That means that this will be a day of elevation and promotion for all of us. I want you to know that good news is coming your way. I said good news is coming your way. The business leader and the business owner shall receive good news. The student shall receive good news. Come on, somebody. Come on, those that are living and breathing in the Aramonite covenant connection will receive good news. Because this is our time for prosperity. This is our time to succeed. And the plans of God shall not be swatted by the enemy. It means that what God has planned for your life, what God has destined for your life, it shall come to pass. I don't care what devil is trying to come against you. In your house, in your marriage, you're against your finances, against your body. I declare and I decree that the remnant is rising today. Now, there are some steps to success. There are some steps. God does have an order. Somebody say order. order. There are principles in the word of God that will teach us how we can rise up and be on top. No matter which area of life he's called us to. You know, it's not just about the church. There are seven mountains of power in the earth. And just because you do not have a position of leadership at the church does not mean that God did not call you to reign and to rule and to conquer. No matter where you are, God called you to not be at the bottom on your job. God called you to be on top. Come on now. God called you to not be in the bottom percentage of your graduating class, but he called you to be on top. God did not call you, come on, just to be at your job, but God is calling you to begin to lead and take authority. You're not just called to be in a neighborhood, but you're supposed to have the best house in the neighborhood. You're, supp you're supposed to be over the neighborhood. Watch in the name of Jesus. You're not just on your job. You're to supervise in the name of Jesus. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, some of you are believing God for the next level on your job. Well, I prophesy that you shall arise. You shall come from the back to the front. You shall move forward. Everything in your way is about to be knocked over and you shall arise. So we are following the principles of God. We come here as a preparation center. This is a preparation center. This is the place that you come to be empowered. This is the place that you come to be instructed on how to have success. So that you can follow the principles of God. You can follow the ways of God. Because the word of God is clear on how we can be successful. Our first principle, go ahead, Mother Tommy. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 3. Uh huh. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Commit your work unto the Lord, no matter what God has called you to do. No matter what job or what profession he's called you to do. No matter what type of business he has called you to own. Come on now. No matter what school 
You're going to. Some people say, the statistics say, well, if you go to Harvard, you'll have a better opportunity to succeed. If you go to Princeton, you'll have the better opportunity to succeed. If you go to Alabama, you go to Auburn. But, well, I will tell you that it's going to take more than intelligence to get you in the place. What God would have you to be. The word of God said commit your work unto the Lord. That means whatever you do. That means if you have a business. You are getting up early. And you are getting there. And you are beginning to walk your business. You are beginning to walk your property. And say I declare and I decree. That this property belongs to the Lord. This business belongs to the Lord. It is through the Lord that I succeed. And I declare that success is coming. Because I'm committing my works unto the Lord the reason why some of you are failing the reason why you in the same place some in the body of Christ in the same place this year that they were five years ago is because you did not commit your works unto the Lord but the word said if you want to rise up to the top tell your neighbor I'm rising up if you want to rise up to the top the first thing that you're going to have to do is commit your works unto who? The Lord. Unto who? The Lord. What is step two? Matthew 6 and 33. Uh-huh. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. My and God. Go ahead. And all these things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God. In all these things shall be added unto you. Meaning that when you begin to put the Lord first, like all of us here today, this is what you call seeking first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added unto you. That nothing will begin to turn for you. Nothing will begin to shift for you. Nothing will be able to succeed until you begin to seek the Lord first. If I were you, I would make a commitment that the rest of 2019, this year of stepping up, I'm going to declare and I'm decree that I will not get to December 2019 without seeking the Lord. Because everything that God has in store for me, Thank you, Lord. I'm positioning myself for it. How am I positioning myself? I am seeking the Lord first in all of his righteousness. We are to exist in an area of power so that we can be in a, a positive role model. We're supposed to be the role models of society. People are not going to listen to what you say. They are going to look at your lifestyle. You preach by how you live. So we are called to be role models. We are to be the voice in the earth. Come on, look at your neighbors. I'm getting my voice back. Wherever God has called you to be, that is your platform. That is where he wants you to preach. Don't be trying to get up here and preach. Preach from where you are. Preach from your position. Preach, come on now, from the role that God has called you to play. You have a voice. And I declare and decree that your voice shall no longer be silent. You shall begin to open up your mouth and declare who you are in the name of G. You're supposed to stand out. You are supposed to stand out in life. When Daniel was in the kingdom, Daniel was in position. Daniel was a politician. He had been called as a, he had been brought to Babylon against his will along with the three Hebrew boys and he was told not to seek God but Daniel began to put God first no matter what position you are in if you begin to put God first I declare that you they might start you out washing dishes but by the time it's over baby you will have stock in the company seek him first in all 
his righteousness, then everything else will be added unto you. What is the next principle? Genesis 13, verses 13 and 14. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. Verse 14, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. Amen. So, you're going to seek the Lord. First, you're going to put the Lord first. Then you're going to seek him. You're going you're to seek him in everything that you do. Another principle is how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as more than a conqueror? Do you see yourself succeeding? How do you see yourself? The enemy wants you to see yourself according to what your life used to be. Before you got saved. Before you asked God into your life. You want, the enemy wants you to see, to you to see yourself when you were in prison. The enemy wants to, you to see yourself when you filed for bankruptcy. The enemy wants you to see yourself when you were on drugs. But how do you see yourself? And God told Abraham, when God got ready to give Abraham an assignment and to set him up and to position him to be the father of the righteous in the earth realm, God began to tell Abraham, Abraham, open up your eyes and tell me what you see. And he looked to the east and he could see land. He looked to the west, to the north, and to the south. And God began to show him, I will give you what I show you. Can I begin to declare to you that where you are is based upon where you see yourself being? You have got to see yourself conquering. You have got to see yourself promoted. You have got to see yourself prospering. You have got to see yourself being the head and not the tail. How do you see yourself? Since you know that you are a believer and you're supposed to conquer much. You're supposed to be on the top. Come on now. Let me tell you. God's people will always be successful in the earth. I think about and look at some of the business owners today. I look at the owner of Chick-fil-A. The Kathy family. The vision that he received for Chick-fil-A, he received that because he was a believer. I look at the owner of J.C. Penney's, who was a believer in God, who started J.C. Penney's based upon a vision that God showed him. I look at Madam C.J. Walker, thank the Lord, hallelujah, who got the idea about the straightening code. Come on, somebody, because she prayed and believed and trusted in God. And God just gave her a snapshot, gave her an idea. How many of you believe in in ideas? Come on, come on. Begin to open up your mouth and begin to open up your mouth and declare a decree. I shall see myself the way God sees me. So I don't care who knocked you upside your head in the past. Come on, I don't care who talked about you in the past, what your teacher said about you in the past. You are not your past. God is not consulting your past to determine where he wants to take you in the future. How do you see yourself? I break that spirit of low self-esteem. I break that spirit of hopelessness. I break that spirit of the projects off you. You are not a product of the projects. You are a product and a son and daughter of the kingdom. And God has some great things prepared for you. You will own your business. You will be a house owner. You will own property. You will be able to be promoted. You shall be able to get up from where you are. Your children shall not be in poverty. Look at.
look at your neighbor and say, how do you see yourself? If you have to, knock them upside the head and say, wake up. Right now. Come on, take the hands of your neighbor. Take your hands of your neighbor. Help. Say, I'm pulling you up out of that darkness. I'm pulling you up out of that low self-esteem. I'm pulling you up in the name of Jesus. You gonna come up out of here today. I said, you gonna get up and come up out of here today. We bind up every demon, every demon of lack, every demon of disbelief. We bind it up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, you're going to have to start believing God and standing on the word of God. If God can do it, come on now for Chick-fil-A. If God can do it for the owner of J.C. Penney, if God can do it for Tyler Perry, then God can do it for me. God is not a respecter of Pope persons he is a respecter of principles come on we got to finish this what's the next one y'all sit down there y'all know i got to finish this before i get in trouble job one and one uh-huh there was a man in the land of oz yeah whose, whose name was joe and that man was blameless and upright. Yeah. One who He was what? Wait, he was what? Blameless and upright. Blameless and upright, okay? One who feared God. Uh-huh. And turned away from evil. Yeah. Listen, you gonna have to live right. If you want to succeed, if you have a plan, come on, written down, and you want the Holy Spirit to breathe on it, you gonna have to live right. Let me tell you what sin will do. Sin will weigh you down. Sin will slow you down and keep you from accomplishing your purpose and your destiny. I want to say to the young people, amen. You don't have time for no boyfriend and girlfriend. Lord have mercy. I said you ain't got time. They ain't going to do nothing but slow you down. It is time for you to accomplish great things. And you got to study. Come on now. You got to walk this thing. Come on. Somebody say, work it, work it, work it. When I'm working my plan, I ain't got time to go lay up in the hotel room. I ain't got time. I don't know who I'm talking to. But you're going to have to be upright. Job was the number one man in the earth. That's why the enemy came against him. Because he had something on the inside of his belly. And you thinking that the devil tried to kill you. You think God is against you. But I'm telling you, if you're going through hell and high water right now, it's because God is setting you up for promotion. I said you're being set up for promotion. That's why the enemy came against Job. He looked in his life. There was no hanky-panky in his life. Just like with Daniel. Daniel was number one in the kingdom. He was the number one politician. Although that wasn't his land, he was there. And because he sought the Lord, because he did what was right, God began to promote him in the kingdom. No hanky-panky in his past. Come on now, no hanging chads. And, come on now, no collusion with the Russians. I, 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 she, there was none of that. No backroom deal. You must determine and make up in your mind you're going to be a person of integrity. When you operate in integrity, God will promote you. Come on, look at your neighbors. I'm getting ready to be promoted. 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 Yeah. 
What does that Hebrew scripture say? Read that about being weighed down so we can run the race. That's Hebrew. Amen. 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 While she looking for that, the next, next principle is scriptural light. Scriptural light. And that's coming from Isaiah 60 and 1. It says, arise and shine. Come on, somebody, I receive the healing in my eyes. Somebody give God a praise. I can read without my glasses. Oh, Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Some of you are getting ready to receive revelation knowledge. The light getting ready to turn on concerning your purpose and your destiny. God's going to give you a picture of where he's trying to take you. So that's how you achieve success. You got to go by what God's showing you and what he will show you and how he will show you is by way of the word of God. What is the next principle? Existing as a blessing. Job 27, 3 through 6. As long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips will not speak falsehood, and my tongue will not utter deceit. Far be it from me to say that you are right. Till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. I hold fast my righteousness and will not let it go. My heart does not reproach me for any of my days. Listen, I'm going to say this about living right. As soon as you start being promoted and you being elevated in the kingdom, and some of you are getting ready to receive some elevations and promotion, as soon as you start being blessed, that's when the enemy is going to try to show you that the grass is greener on the other side. That's when the enemy is going to try to lure you away from the house. That's when the enemy is going to try to lure you away from your marriage. That's when the enemy is going to come out, going to cause you to get involved with something that's not integral at all of how you can write money, trick people out of money, and still succeed. The devil is a lie. But you got to be like Job. I don't care what the devil show me. It's not greater than what God want to give me. You've got to operate uprightly. Uh, let's go to existing as a blessing. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. In order to be blessed, you also have to be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. And I will make of you a great nation. Somebody say, I'm ready to be great. Come on, say, someone say, greatness is in me. So I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Meaning that in order for you to be blessed, you're going to have to be a blessing. Can I submit some truth to you? Just because people got money don't necessarily mean that they like to give the people. There are some stingy. I don't care how much the Lord blessed people with. You can go even to the, you can go to the, to the casino and hit the, the money or whatever they call it and win you about $50,000 and you will not even bring $5 in the church. Just because people have money does not mean that they submit it unto the Lord. But can I tell you something? In order for you to be blessed, you're going to have to be a blessing. I said, you're going to have to be a blessing. You can hide the money. Come on now. You cannot reveal what you got. But I'm telling you, God's got a way to get it. Come on, there's a way.
pay to get it. But if you want your money to grow, come on, look at your neighbor and say, my money is growing. Come on, if you want your money to grow, if you want your money to multiply, somebody say multiply, you're going to have to do what's right. And God said, all the money, all the cattle on the hill belongs to me. And if you are not submitting, My God, be a blessing rising to the top. The Arimanites are rising. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, begin to lift your hands up in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we give you all the praise. For this word that you have released, this word of exhortation, this word of promotion, Lord God. We thank you, Father, on this day. You have given us precepts. Lord, you have given us your divine order for the Aramanites to rise and be a blessing during this season. Father, we shall seek you first in everything that we do. We shall commit our ways unto you, O oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we will be a blessing so that we can get a blessing. Father, we give you praise. We declare that every stronghold that is on our life that keep us from prospering and going into the next dimension is being broken right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, now right now, I want you to begin to just speak in the spirit. Come on, begin to open up your mouth and pray. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, all over the building, we're praying. Come on and pray. Yeah, yeah. Come on and pray. Catch the hand of your neighbor. Pray for your neighbor. Come on, catch the hand of your neighbor. Say, you will prosper. You will succeed. I want you to repeat after me. I prophesy that anything I lay my hands to do in 2019 shall be successful to the glory of God. I shall break through on every side in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that in 2019, nothing shall be able to limit me or stop me from becoming what God has created me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. If you